Deloitte and Enterprise Ireland CEO Forum 2016. Aidan Brogan, CEO, Datalex PLC, talks to us about strategies for growth and scaling and the pace of change within e-commerce. Good morning, everybody, um, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to present, and uh, thank you to Deloitte and Enterprise Ireland. So what I'll do is take the next 10 or 15 minutes to essentially bring you into the life in Datalex um, and the pace of change and activity that's going on. Um, and talk about some of the challenges that we faced over the last three or four years um, and uh, sort of give you exposure into that. Uh, I would say to say life in Datalex is fast moving is probably one of the greatest understatements uh, of the time. Uh, we are moving at phenomenal pace and that's getting faster and faster. So, um, sorry, apologies. First of all, to give you a little bit of insight into uh, Datalex, our focus is on uh, the digital revolution or digital transformation within the travel space, um, more specifically within the airline space initially and then um, into the broader travel market. Uh, our proposition is to enable airlines to move faster and faster and to adapt faster to the ever-changing needs of their consumers. So let me give you uh, sort of one specific example. Uh, one of our customers uh, is an airline based in New York called JetBlue. Uh, for those of you that fly Aer Lingus out of New York, they share the same Terminal 5 building uh, in JFK. Uh, JetBlue carried 35 million passengers, and they, uh, a couple of years ago, adapted or adopted a strategy where they wanted to better understand their customer um, and essentially control the offer to each of their customers. The technology that they used at the time uh, didn't give them that level of flexibility. Uh, so they selected Datalex following a, 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 an RFP process. Um, and effectively, uh, they implemented what they called their dynamic fare bundling and merchandising strategy. Uh, and they went live last year. This has delivered, this is public information, this strategy has delivered $200 million in incremental profit per year. And essentially all that they're doing is uh, better understanding their customer, better understanding their customer concerns, segmenting their customer, and presenting a more relevant tailor offer to that customer. Uh, and that effectively is giving the customer better choice and also driving up their revenue. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that and how it influences uh, sort of life in Datalex as we go on. Um, briefly to talk about Datalex, uh, I took over as CEO uh, just over four and a half years ago. Um, and one of the things, uh, sort of my leadership style, would be very direct, very pragmatic, um, very team orientated. So we spent a, a, the first year or so really uh, trying to understand where we wanted to go and grow the business, looking at the strategy and how we could scale. Um, in the last uh, four years, uh, we have delivered double digit growth across all of our key financial performance indicators. Um, and effectively, we've doubled the size of the business. Uh, and that will continue um, as we go forward, that trajectory. Um, as I say, the, the uh, area we're focused on is, is on airlines. And I, I started to jump in a little bit and to give you a life. And I'm sure this is like other industries. Um, the challenge that airlines have is uh, the core business process technology um, was designed uh, about 50 years ago. Uh, there's a core mainframe. Um, it's a legacy business process, business application. Um, and the reality that they have is most airlines' primary focus is on operations, uh, which moves at a very slow pace, as you could imagine, within an operations world. The challenge they have is the customer lives in a digital world, and the pace of change in the digital world, as we know, is getting faster and faster. And it presents that real challenge within a business. How do you, let's say, maintain focus on operations and move at a very slow pace, but yet the challenge you have is your consumer doesn't live in that world? And particularly the emerging consumers, you know, the kids of today, you know, anybody less than 30 doesn't really live in that world. It's, it's digital, and that pace is moving faster and faster. And that creates massive opportunities, and that's where Datalex are focused. And I suppose if, if I, you know, certainly my view would be in the life cycle of sort of the digital transformation in, in our space, it is only beginning. The opportunities are only starting. Um, one of the things we did uh, was uh, we sat down, as I say, three or four years ago, and we really challenged ourselves in terms of where we were going as a business how we you know, uh, behaved as a business, um, uh, our culture, et cetera. And we fundamentally uh, came up with a strategy around uh, our customer, 
uh, our people, uh, product, and partners. And we did it for a specific reason, and I'll give you a little bit more detail in each of those. Uh, I would say as a typical software company, we were totally internally focused. Life existed in our world, not really outside. Our customers were effectively a necessary evil. Uh, we really had no empathy with our customer. Um, and we did things because we wanted to do them, not because we believed that the world or our customers wanted it. So we fundamentally had to change that. Uh, and I will talk about change because I think that probably, looking back, is, uh, was and is our biggest challenge. Um, but I, I introduced stuff like uh, a, a net promoter score where we ask our customers how happy they are. Uh, and I got a lot of resistance internally. You know, people thought I was mad. Don't, ask our, don't ever ask our customers if they're happy because they'll just tell you they're not. Um, but I said, for us to decide where we're going to invest our money, we need to understand where our customers feel we are lacking uh, and therefore we will invest in those areas. Um, so we do that today. We, we, uh, we really have put the customer at the center of our world rather than Datalex. Uh, and we, every six months, we do a, a simple customer survey to understand how well that's going. And that will evolve. Uh, and we're moving that whole customer success strategy into the core DNA within Datalex across everybody uh, in the organization. The other one is people success. So I'm a, I'm a big sports uh, sort of addict. Uh, and I believe in team sports, and you're only as good as the team and the manager. And you can see that with, with the Irish rugby team and their latest success. Um, again, uh, as a software company, we are a knowledge-based company. We are only as good as the people within our organization. And particularly when you look at a global basis, all of our customers, bar our lingus, are outside of Ireland, across every part of the world. That is a big challenge in any organization. So therefore, you have to have, let's say, a team spread around the world that you can rely on trust and represent Datalex in terms of brand recognition, etc. Uh, so we, uh, I mean, to give you a flavor, a year and a half, two years ago, we had one person in HR, I would argue, who was just a HR administrator. Today, we have a team of five people in our people success strategy, which is a holistic organizational development capability, I would say. Uh, culture, etc. Um, then we looked at the product and partners. And, and again, as a software company, for those of you that, that, that sort of work within one, um, we, were a, we, did, we had this not invented here syndrome. We thought we were smarter than everybody else. That was our, our sort of DNA, our culture. Um, and we built everything ourselves. And essentially, it was a closed uh, community. And I said, the challenge with that is going forward and scaling. We can't scale Datalex fast enough to meet the market opportunity that is in front of us. And I said, we need to actually turn the whole company upside down. And effectively, I was looking at companies like uh, the Stripe uh, payment guys, the Collinson brothers in um, Limerick, and also Apple, and how Apple changed their sort of strategy with Apple App Store and embraced a community of developers. So we effectively turned our product upside down. That took a long time to get people uh, on side with that. Um, but effectively, you know, we have completely changed our product, uh, and it's down into componentization, speed, agility. Um, the other one that we did was partner success. So again, when, I, when we looked at how we could scale the business, one of the, one of the challenges was well, we can't scale fast enough. We can't have scale all around the world. We need to embrace partners. Um, and we really holistically changed the organization to embrace partners, both at a knowledge level, at a technical level, and at a people level. Uh, and I'll talk about one or two examples in that. Um, and in terms of scale, uh, the video talked about it there. We have a billion shoppers using um, Datalex uh, products and services uh, to shop for their products and services around the world. Um, just to jump into people's success, and I suppose holistically, culture, et cetera, um, one of the areas we looked at was what's the Datalex personality? We need a personality. We need, when people talk about Datalex, we need to be able to, you know, let's say, have a slide or a culture that we can talk about. So we embarked uh, under our people success strategy a holistic engagement across all parts of the business and all geographies um, to, to map out our personality. And this is what we ended up with, to deliver through collaboration with courage and creativity. You know, creativity, you know, to allow people to really think and, and, and sort of uh, embrace change, etc. Courage, to have the courage to challenge what we do. Um, and collaboration, collaboration within our own organization, but within our customers and within our partners. Um, and it is, again, uh, a fundamental sort of part of our DNA going forward. Uh, I'll talk about two partners uh, that we've evolved. Um, one is IBM, 
Um, so IBM have a technology called Watson, um, Artificial Intelligence Cognitive Learning. Um, and uh, earlier this year, we announced a partnership with IBM where we're taking the Datalex uh, digital commerce uh, solution for travel, and we're taking the IBM Artificial Intelligence Cognitive Learning technology, and we're merging that. And effectively, what we're doing is we're bringing the capability of machine learning technology to the uh, customer segmentation, offer management, order management, essentially digital commerce within the travel space, and we're merging that together. Um, I would say, you know, if you, if you haven't read about artificial intelligence and cognitive learning and Watson, you should definitely read about it. It is going to fundamentally change everything we do in every business uh, here and, and all around the world. Um, uh, Minister uh, Mitchell O'Connor talked earlier on about uh, the recent trip to, uh, to China. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Judy Cinnamon and the Minister uh, for uh, attending the uh, signing of our partnership with Newsoft. Uh, Newsoft is the largest indigenous uh, software company in China, 29,000 people. Uh, they run two universities uh, and they're scaling up their business. So the question is, why did we do it? Um, we opened the office in Beijing uh, two years ago. We relocated uh, a guy from here to Beijing. Uh, he, he finished his MBA in Ireland. He's Chinese, finished his, from Beijing, finished his MBA here. He joined Atlix and then we sent him back and now he runs our business there. One of the things, we, two things we were told from our customer feedback was you need to scale and invest in, in China. Uh, and secondly, uh, you need a local partner um, who has scale. So we basically did a very formal RFP process and we approached every IT, we approached every IT company, even though they were multiple times their size, uh, and we really set out our stall. And the result was uh, our partnership with Newsoft, which really moves us up a level within um, the Chinese market. Uh, and what, it, what is interesting is their, their, one of their objectives is try to get outside of China. Uh, so we have uh, customers across Asia. So let's say they're helping us within China uh, and we're helping them um, expand some of their business outside of China. Uh, I have this slide up which uh, uh, talks about change and uh, effectively it says that uh, you know, it's not the biggest company that's going to be successful or the, or, uh, or the biggest of a species, it's the one that's most receptive to change. And I would say if I look back uh, over the last three years and even what we're doing now and into the future, our biggest challenge is the pace of change. Uh, and I would say there's two aspects to that. Uh, one is, again, I don't, even, I don't know whether this is purely a technology uh, sort of trait. Uh, our company was very reluctant to change. Uh, whether it was fear, whether it was uncertainty, whether it was, uh, let's say, arrogance, that we said, well, why would we change? We're fantastic. I don't, I, I don't know. All I know is we needed to change, um, and that presented a big challenge. Um, Another aspect to it was, uh, I, two years ago, I did the, one of the Enterprise Ireland leadership courses, uh, the leadership for growth in Switzerland uh, in the IMD. And uh, I got a lot out of it. One, one area that resonated with me was a professor, uh, Howard Yu, uh, talked about how a small company uh, plays against a big company. And the analogy basically, and, and I'm sure you, you'll be able to relate to it, is when you go into a competition and somebody's bigger than you, be they a company or whatever, you're intimidated, you feel that, well, they've got much more people than we have, they're much bigger, uh, how do we compete against them? And I suppose it resonates with us because the majority of our competitors are like 10 times our size, um, and it created a real challenge for us. But what he made, he made a very, very pertinent point, and he said, the reality is the world is moving so quickly, change and the ability to change is probably uh, a company's biggest, uh, uh, let's say, uh, asset or hindrance, depending on how adaptive to change. And he said that when you stand back from it and you look at a big company and a small company, you can influence change very, very quickly within the small company. In a big company, it takes a, a much longer, longer time. Um, I think that's what I took away from it. And I was, I was thinking more so about even companies based in Ireland or Irish companies. One of the advantages we have is, you know, out of, out of an Irish curiosity, we like exploring, you know, challenging things and really looking at the art of the possible. Uh, and that ability to change, I think, is a huge asset in our armor. Um, the other thing we did was, when we looked at the strategy, 
Uh, I suppose fundamentally we sell software, and, and again, historically, if I go back, that's what we were doing. We were selling software to IT people, but the reality is when we sort of challenged ourselves, it was, yeah, we're selling software, but actually what we're selling is a vision to business people, uh, and we're selling a vision of what life will be like if you work with Datalex, and particularly not what life will be like today, but what life will be like tomorrow. Um, and, and again, that's uh, a fundamental part of what we do today uh, and becoming more and more a part of it. Um, that same um, sort of thesis, uh, uh, ethos um, applies to the people that work within Datalex um, and particularly our leadership team. One of the biggest challenges we have is uh, the leaders of the organization. So if I go back three or four years ago, and, I, and if, if, if you met me and asked me, do I have the leadership team uh, that will bring the company forward, I would have said, yeah. When I look back now, the reality was we didn't. We had some people who just didn't share. As I said, you know, we were all swimming in one direction, and some people were swimming in the other direction. Um, some people were in the wrong role. They got promoted uh, because technically they were good, so then we put them in charge of the whole operation and it figured out that actually that wasn't their core expertise. Um, and the sporting analogy, I suppose, is, you know, I look at, you know, we would have been playing in the first division, and the team and management team, you know, th that got us to win that and into the premiership is probably not the same leadership management team that's going to get us into the Champions League, and that's the way I sort of use that with the leadership team. You know, we look at our strategy, constantly challenging our strategy, uh, and making sure that the leaders are, are the guys and girls who bring it forward. Um, I'm going to start closing out, but I suppose the three key takeaways, you know, if I look at my own role as CEO at Datalex uh, and the challenges within Datalex, one is strategy. You know, you have to map out where you want to be in the next three to five years, and you have to robustly challenge that and get some external people to challenge it. The other thing I'd say is, um, it needs to be done on an annual basis. So the assumptions, you know, let's say that existed a year ago that led to our strategy are probably very different now than what they were a year ago. Um, the other one is change. Uh, a receptive, uh, let's say a, a, cha a, a, cha a culture of change, um, agility, ability to move. And the last one is speed. Uh, the three things that come back from, fundamentally, the, the three things that come back from our customers uh, when we asked them um, in the MPS scores, we really like the Datalex product, the solution, the technology. We like your team. We like working with you guys. You know, uh, you're open, you're direct. Uh, you're just not moving fast enough. We need you to move faster and faster and faster. Uh, and I don't see that ever stopping because the world is moving faster and faster. Um, the last thing I'll leave you with is um, effectively, uh, if you look at the digital world and, and some of the emerging technologies and some of the trends, even, even sort of social things like um, uh, uh, Pokemon Go, these things emerge and they grow overnight. Uh, and my, my sort of uh, challenge uh, to everybody here is you, know, you need to fundamentally uh, try and disrupt yourself because if you don't, there's somebody out there who's smarter, quicker, uh, and effectively brighter than you are, whether you like it or not, and they're going to come along, and their primary objective is try to disrupt you. So what I leave you with is uh, disrupt or be disrupted. Okay, thank you very much.